Thank you for downloading my Adobe Photoshop action for smoothing skin. Now, lots of people have asked me in the past on how do we use this action. It is very, very simple. It's not a one-click solution, I'm afraid. There is a little bit of hands-on work that needs to be done. And what I'm going to show you now is how to apply it to this lady's skin here. You can see she has a few spots and a few uh, blackheads over there and a few deeper pores, although I think her skin is perfectly lovely but I think she wants some of these blemishes to be removed. So what I'm going to do, without further ado, is go to the Windows menu, click on Actions, just to bring up the Actions palette. And if I have installed my action, it should appear there. If I haven't installed it, if I click on this small side menu, click on Load Actions, and then go to the action and load it. But anyway, I've already done that, so there it is at the bottom there. If you can't see these very colourful buttons and you will need to click on button mode. Right, I'm going to start by clicking on the skin smooth action. Now the Gaussian blur, to get the right level, because you see that it's come up with a dialog box to allow you to choose, what you need to do is simply slide the radius to the point where you can see those minor blemishes and then just push it out a little more so that they become almost indiscernible. You don't want to over blur your image but at the same time you want to knock out some of these very annoying and myriad of little creases and spots that appear on skin. Now if I click on OK we can see all of those spots have gone however the detail around the eyes, around the eyebrows, around the nose all of that's gone as well, so we don't want to lose that information. Let's have a look at the history palette, see what's happened. First of all, it appears, as we can see here, that the layer that I had selected, in this case it was the lady's face, was duplicated. Then the Gaussian blur was applied, then noise was applied, and then blur again. Now we go to the layer palette, we can see there's a duplicate layer, layer 1, which contains the same information as my previous layer, the background layer. Now if I switch that layer off, you can see the original image is perfectly intact beneath. Now I'm going to show you something which I think you'll be impressed with if you haven't already experienced layer masks. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock holes in this layer to reveal some of that finer detail beneath. And I'm going to do that by generating a layer mask. And you can see there, add layer mask at the very bottom of the layer palette. So I've got my layer selected. Click on that. You see a separate th thumbnail appears. This is the actual mask thumbnail itself. And now I'm going to choose the brush tool. And uh, I'm just going to soften it a little bit. Using black, it masks an area off within that layer, so it effectively knocks a hole in that layer. Now, I'm going to start off with her hair. Increase the size of your brush using your squared brackets. If I just paint away at her hair, just to bring that information back. Any information that I want back in the image, I'm simply going to gently paint over it. And you can change the opacity if you need to, if you just want a gradual increase in detail. It's always a good idea just to go over the areas like around the edges of the nose, around the mouth, around the eyes. And don't worry if you're bringing too much back, because we can go over this later in finer detail. Now I think that's a good start. Now if I just switch the background off, you can see what areas I've oops, what areas I've pushed out. Right, now if I push that back, you can see now that's just her skin. You can also do this via selection. The layer mask is just one method. I think it's the best method because you've got more control, you can go back and forth between the detail. See if I wanted to bring push this out again, all I'd need to do is flip to white. There. So just flipping between the colours allows you to 
push out and bring back in. I use the X key on my keyboard, just X on its own, just to alternate between the black and the white. If I bring the brush size down, that's the uh, squared bracket to the left, using white, I'm just going to start homing in on some of those close-up areas that I would just like to soften. I could do it with the actual inside of the eye, really. Again, avoiding edges and areas of detail, such as the eyelashes. Just gently push out those creases and wrinkles and spots. See the eyebrows gone so I will need to bring that back in of course. Probably gone a bit too far. Again we can reduce the opacity just for a softer blend. And I'll do the same with the other eye, and then finish with the nose. the mouth and the lips you can also do I'm going to reduce the opacity a little this lips are obviously a naturally wrinkly it's the way they should be so all I'm doing really is I suppose it's the job of a makeup artist although I haven't got a clue what makeup's all about um, I'm just applying some kind of foundation I'm not trying to artificially make her look younger I'm just doing what any photographer would do or makeup artist on a film set and that's just reduce blemishes that really will stand out on film. I could probably go a bit further than that. If you want to remove blemishes, now I'm assuming this is a mole here, but I'm going to pretend for the time being that it is a spot on the background layer calling up the healing brush I'm just going to pick that away perhaps I should do it also on the layer above there we go just missed a bit there so I'm going to bring that back in right okay so there we go it's uh, looking a lot better but this is the kind of thing you see in magazines all the time. The skin just looks plastic and terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity on my manipulated layer, the layer which the action was applied to. And I can do that simply by choosing the opacity and I'm going to put it at about 70% just to see how that looks. And there we go. Look at that. You've got some of the original details coming through on her skin some of the natural creases in the skin but a lot of those spots have now gone and I can just make a few last minute improvements using the clone, sorry using the healing tool I should say on the background layer but already I think her skin is starting to glow and when I'm ready I can just flatten the image now let's have a look at the before and after, that's how it was before and that's how it is now. You've got the detail still in there, you've got the skin texture still in there, but the smaller points, the blackheads, the greasy pores, all the things that we don't particularly like in a photograph, they have now gone. Thank you for watching my um, tutorial on using this particular action. Um, please do visit the website again for more tutorials on using Adobe Photoshop. Thank you very much.